Okay, so in this presentation I will tell you about installation of Win2K together with what you should do when you want to do really large scale applications. That means a tree system uh, with many atoms per unit cell, that means where you need heavy parallelization. Now, Win2K runs on any Linux platform basically from PCs over Macs to workstations, to clusters, to supercomputers. Win2K does not run, obviously, under Microsoft Windows. That's a first statement. When you want to buy some hardware, you have not much money, then the recommendation is to use an Intel i7 multi-core processor. The importance is Intel processors are usually, at least nowadays, much, much faster than AMD processors, and with Intel you may know there are these i5, i3, or i7, and it's important that you get an i7 because i7 has a fast memory bus, bus and that is the essential thing that you can use the processor speed in such numeric applications. Such a PC costs about 1,000 to 1,500 euro per uh, per PC and with, for instance, a few such PCs, you have a really powerful cluster where you can do k-parallel calculations for <coughs> unit cells, let's say up to 100 atoms, and you should buy in such a uh, machine about two to four gigabyte RAM per core. So in a eight in a quad core process, at least eight or better, 16 gigabyte RAM per processor. Uh, if you have more money or if you want to go to even bigger systems, then you have to go to Intel Xeon based workstations. Uh, you have need then a cluster of these Intel Xeons. The network in between has to be InfiniBand. Gigabit network is too slow and the probably at the moment the best performance you get if you buy two times eight core Intel Xeon processors, because if you have more cores, you may be soon again limited by the memory access. So even if you have, let's say, 32 cores, it will not be faster than when you run 32 processes parallel than when you run 16 only, because the memory cannot feed enough the processes. When you go in this direction, you need an MPI and scale back but with such an installation of a couple of those uh, uh, of, of these workstations, you can then uh, calculate unit cells up to 1,000 atoms. You need Fortran if you want to use the full, uh, uh, full features of these kind of things. Uh, as Fortran compiler, I recommend the iFort compiler. I'll say later on something else. Important is most of the computer time goes into what is called the basic linear algebra subroutine library. And this BLAS library is included in the MKL, which is the mathematical kernel uh, library, which comes together with this iFort. And this is most important for a good speed up. For the MPI parallel version, you also need scalar pack, which is also included in the MKL. And you need the FFTW uh, subroutine packages which are available on the web. You can download and install them. What else do I need? Uh, Linux is not Linux. Also Linux is Linux. That means uh, certain versions of Linux like Ubuntu or SUSE or Red Hat or whatever do not by default install the same packages. That means if you perform a default installation of some Linux, you may ha it may happen that certain tools are not installed by default. So which tools do we need? Obviously, since we are using the C shell or the TC shell, you need to install the TC shell. We need Perl, because only then you have Win2Web. We, we, we uh, need a ghost script program to view PostScript programs. We need Nuplot, a PDF reader like Acrobat or so, we need this Octave, we need Python in a decent version, and if you want to use this, you would need OpenDX, but this is re not really 
necessary. Obviously, you want to view what you have done, and the most efficient program here is this x then Please remember, x then is not part of Win2K. It's public domain. You have to install it, download it from the web, and install <coughs> it yourself. There are a couple of other softwares uh, mentioned here. For instance, Vesta is an alternative structure visualization program. Uh, DFD D3, what uh, Fabienne talked this morning, the libxc library, you also heard about this, and if you want Vanier 90 for Vanier functions or Phonopy for phonons and things like this. There are a couple of other unsupported software products available which you can find on our website, or the link uh, is due to our website. When you want to get Win2K, you have to register at our site online. Uh, then you should create the win to k a win root directory for instance slash win 2 k you download the tarball of win 2 k and also the examples most likely you uncompress and expand these files according to this list and then you get a list of programs they all start with src underscore and the name of the programs uh, also some <coughs> templates with with example inputs for certain things uh, are given on that side. The installation afterwards, and after you have expanded this tarball, is done with a program called siteconfig lepw. And in the siteconfig, you specify a system, meaning, for instance, an Intel uh, PC with Linux. You specify a certain compiler, for instance, the iFort. You specify compiler options configure the parallel ex uh, execution, you can redimension the program, compile it, and also update the program. For most of these things, there are defaults, and I will come to this in a moment. Uh, in terms of dimensions, there's one thing to mention, and that is uh, there is a parameter nmatmax, which should be adjusted to your specific hardware. So suppose you set nmatmax to 10,000. This gives you then the maximum matrix size which is allowed for calculations. Win2k will reduce automatically the matrix size to this limit. So don't expect when you run with nmatmax 10,000 and you create a huge supercell of 100 atoms, you specify archimax equals 10, that you really get this archimax. Win2K will automatically reduce the Archimax until the matrix, the resulting matrix, is smaller than this nmatmax. Why are we using this nmatmax? Because with this limit, we avoid that you get paging on your computer. Paging usually means that your computer gets unusable. If it would not respond, that would mean all the memory is eaten up by a program, it's paging to hard disk in and out from memory, and basically it does not respond at all on, your, on, on anything, also not on your keyboard anymore. Yeah, then your computer would be blocked, and in order to avoid this, you should set this parameter such that it fits to your hardware. What does it mean? 10,000 means I need uh, uh, about 2 gigabyte uh, memory for uh, <coughs> One LEPW1, that means if you have four cores and you want to run four LEPW1s in parallel, you need at least eight gigabyte of memory to support this nmatmax. Otherwise, the calculations will start paging. With such a uh, matrix size, you can run about unit cells of 50 to 10 to 100 atoms per unit cell. Of course, if you have more memory, you can increase this during the installation. Uh, but remember, that goes squared. So if I remove, the, uh, if I increase this to 20,000, the memory will be four times as big, giving me eight gigabytes. And if you have four cores, four times eight already means 32 gigabytes of RAM on your PC. Okay. Good. 
Uh, for the compilation, we really highly recommend that you use Intel's Fortran compiler iFort and the, the MKL, which is included. Unfortunately, as far as I now know, it is not anymore free, even for non-commercial usage. Also, you can, with some tricks, I think, still get a free version of this Intel iFort, but they change policy every couple of months, so I don't know. If it's installed on your system, you can find out with a command like which iFort that tells you, if you get a positive answer here, that tells you that you can use iFort and which version you have. Usually iFort is installed in, this, in a subdirectory starting with opt intel and compo uh, surf xa uh, in some year here, uh, something like this. When you install your Intel Fortran compiler yourself, some people say, ah, I have installed Intel Fortran compiler, but it doesn't work. Of course not, because after installation, you have to get to know that it is installed. And this is done by sourcing certain variables and setting passes. And this can be done by to such uh, by putting similar such commands as listed here, you may have to change the path here. That depends on your system, uh, and putting such lines into your bash RC or C shell RC file. Only then you can use the I4. So installation alone is not enough. You have also to get the path and the environmental variables into your specific environment. Uh, when you install iFort, you should use this Intel 64, or formerly it was called EMT 64T version. Uh, of course, the ER 64 bit that was for another processor, the Itanium processor that is nowadays outdated, or something like this. Don't stick with the 32 bit ver uh, uh, version because then you are limited with memory. Uh, 32 bit cannot address arrays bigger than 2 gigabytes. So uh, this doesn't work out. Use this one here. Uh, what else is here to say? I think, of course, you can use GFortran also. This is the free new Fortran compiler, uh, but this will limit you in terms of speed. Sideconfig has some default uh, support, and in particular, the standard sideconfig option I, I for Intel, should work with modern i4 compilers without any modification, so you don't need to change anything in your environment or in your parameters, at least not for the sequential compilation. So I would say as, as soon as you have properly installed the i4 and included in your environment with the source commands, Compilation, sequential compilation of Win2K should be fairly easy. Final rem uh, remark, since iFort is not free, of, uh, I would say it does not make sense to invest in new hardware and buy a 30% faster computer if you then use the G Fortran, which is probably sl two times slower than iFort and MKL. Right? So consider these things. After the installation of Win2K, the site config, which usually is done only once on a cluster of computer, on a computer cluster, every user can use this provided he knows where are the Win executables. You get to get the, uh, the environment properly. And this can be done if every user who wants to use Win2K executes the command user config LAPW because that sets up the environment in either your C shell or pass RC file. It sets the path, it sets this win root variables and things like this. It sets these aliases, uh, which are very important for use. And it allows you to set a parallelization uh, with two cores, this OMP num thread, if this is set to two for multi-core machines, this will use then automatically two cores in parallel. Win2Web. Win2Web is a web server, a specialized web server, and it's communicating through a user-defined high port. 
we have this username and password and the port which you define in the first setup and then you have to specify always this port. The problem is many computing systems are nowadays behind a firewall and this firewall will block these high ports usually. So what you have to do is you have to create a tunnel, it's called an SSH tunnel, between your PC and the supercomputer where Win2K, uh, Win2Web is running when there is a firewall in between. Uh, under Linux, one would create a tunnel with such a command, like this, if you want to tunnel the port 5000, which I have assumed in this example, and you saw, saw similar commands, for instance, on this installation here, where you also had to put in these stupid numbers when you connected, when you did the login, this is the same thing, you have to create these tunnels. You can also do it with pure Windows, with PuTTY or something like this, also this supports something like this. If you want to make Win2Web even more secure than just username and password, you can put in the configuration file lines like deny star dot star dot star dot star. That means nobody is allowed to access the Win2Web server except a line with allow these specific uh, IP addresses. Only from those addresses you can are allowed to access Win2K. Now we have successfully, hopefully, installed Win2K and we want to do a bigger calculations. We have a powerful, small, little cluster and we want to run K-point parallelization. This is a very efficient parallelization, even on loosely coupled PCs with just gigabit network. What you need is two things, namely a common NFS file system and SSH without password. What does that mean, a common NFS file system? And here is the first thing you have to do. If you install personally your Linux, your home directory will be slash home on computer one. On computer two, there will also be a slash home, but the data are not the same, of course, on these two computers, and you want that they are common. So the best thing is on computer or on host one, you rename your home directory host1 and on computer2 you call it host2 and using what is called the network file system NFS a server and a client on the corresponding machines you mount host1 from computer1 mount it on computer2 and then on computer2 you can access all your data over the network that is called what is a common NFS file system. This is one requirement and the second is you need to do S be able to do SSH with password. That is even more simple because for this kind of things you need super user permissions. This everybody can do on his own. Uh, you execute the command SSH keychain key minus type RSA and this creates a public and a private key in this SSH directory. And when you now transfer this public key to the remote host and append it into this file, then you can log on, on the remote, to the remote host without putting a password. To make now the parallelization in a specific case directory, you create a dot machines file with lines like one colon host one, maybe two, colon host 2. In this example I have assumed that host 2 is twice as fast as host 1 uh, because the first number here is a speed and then after the colon this is the host name. So you can even make a, uh, use of two different PCs, a slow one and a fast one, by giving the relative speeds of those two computers in such lines. Uh, with test para you can test your distribution, how you will distribute the K points, and you activate then the parallelization once you have created this machines file with the switch minus P or by clicking on this parallel item uh, in Win2Web. 
During the exercises, you have a few exercises later on where you should do this parallelization and you can explore this, how simple at least using it, it is once that has been set up. Now there is one uh, limitation of this k-point parallelization. The case must fit into your memory. So if your unit cell gets larger and larger and larger, maybe you end up with only one k-point. So you cannot do k-point parallelization. And uh, furthermore, this big matrix will not fit anymore in the memory of your computer. Uh, another port, uh, important point is that eventually, if you have many computers doing this, this could pose a high NFS load on your network. And then it might be uh, good to use a local scratch directory to store the big vector files, the most, the largest file, on a local uh, directory on each of those computers. This is done simply by adding minus scratch and then the name of this scratch directory. I already talked about this parallelization uh, with the MKL, I think. The way LEPW1 and 2 work in this parallel uh, setup is that you have this K-list file, which by now I think everybody has seen. Uh, and there might be, let's say, 100 K points in there. And then you distribute these 100 K points into 30, 30, and maybe 40 or whatever. It will do it automatically. And in this task, you execute then only one third of this total number of K points, here two and here two, and you will be three times faster than without parallelization. In LAPW2, you have to gather together all the energies to calculate the common Fermi energy, but then you do again in parallel the calculation of the valence densities for the corresponding K points, and in a small extra program, some para, you sum these three partial densities up and generate here the valence density. Now, for bigger cases, and bigger means, let's say, more than 50 atoms per unit cell, and a good hardware. And good hardware means hardware with, at le for sure, more than four cores. A four-core parallel machine is not suitable, really, for fingering MPI parallelization. For those cases, and when you have a fast network like InfiniBand, or eventually a bigger shared memory machine, as we would have here with 32 core machines uh, on that machine, which we are using here in, in, in these exercises, uh, then you would need to install MPI. And various MPIs are available. I usually use also the Intel MPI because our university has a campus license, so don't ask me about the performance of these other MPIs. I don't know that. And you need then Scalapack, and also Scalapack is included in the MPI, in, in the MKL, in the IFORT compiler. One word of warning, when you use Scalapack, you have to define a Blux library, and this Blux library depends on the version of your MPI. So to, in order to make a successful compilation of Win2K with MPI, you need to know which MPI of those versions here you really have installed on your system. If you don't know it yourself, ask your system administrator. You cannot compile Win2K without no knowing which MPI you really actually have, because you have to change the name of this library according to which MPI you have. You also need for this, this FFTW, uh, for fast Fourier transform, you have to install this. One can install this uh, uh, on your own, but you have to install also the MPI version of that. To activate the fine grain parallelization, the syntax in this machine's host file is very similar. You put one line like this with a speed parameter a name of a host, but then you can say how many cores you want to use of this host. So for instance, four here, and then you can, with a blank separated, specify another host, which has also four, and it could go on with a couple of those. In this example, you would have an eight uh, core MPI parallel job on these two hosts 
with such a machine files. Also, LEPW0 can be parallelized in that way with this syntax, but usually the time spent here is much uh, less than what you spend in LEPW1. And of course, you can simultaneously do K point and MPI parallelization simply by putting a second line in this file, maybe with hosts three and four, if you have four of those hosts. As having such a uh, software, uh, such a hardware, then you can si uh, study systems like the one which Heinz, I think, already mentioned, which had 11 atoms in the unit cell, and on a 64 cores, one SCF cycle takes about one iteration. So you see, even a single SCF run for such a system may take a couple of days on 64 cores. If you happen to have a better hardware, let's say you have 1,000 cores, however, that scales quite nicely and you may easily be 10 times faster or something like this if you have the corresponding resources. Now I want to give you a few hints to see if your calculations really run efficiently or not. And in order to do this, you should check this case day file. We already <coughs> announced this day file. You all know this. You looked at this. And I told you with this day file, you see how long a calculation takes, for instance. And if I see something like this, uh, that I have four nodes, neon to neons to EOS machines, and all are running with 180% and having more or less the same time, one minute and 46 seconds, something like this. This is very efficient. We are using four cores because of this OMP num thread of, of each of these computers, and it's running fine, no problem. However, in this example, two days later, I used similar machines. They should be all equivalent, something like this. And then when I looked at the day file, I found out, oops, Susie we, we needed two minutes, 16 seconds, but Planck needed three minutes. So no way, this is not the same anymore. That means uh, Susie was idling for almost one minute until finally the Planck was finishing. And even worse, LEPW2, which is usually a very small time or much smaller time than this time, right? Was suddenly here using on Susie 13 seconds, so almost nothing. But on Planck it was using one minute and 50 seconds. What was going on? Yeah, somebody else was using this, starting to use this computer named Planck, or the network of Planck was completely overloaded or whatever. But if something like this happened, you should react. It does not make sense that you continue this with this parallel setup because the parallel calculation will take, I don't know, 10 times longer than a non-parallel calculation, right? So if something like this happens, either you look on Planck with a PS or a top command who is also using this and ask your friend, your colleague or whatever to stop his calculations or discuss with him who is using it or change your machines file on the fly. You can on the fly change the machines file while a job is running and specify two other hosts here. No problem with this. In the next cycle, it will automatically use instead of Planck, let's say EOS if you replace this, and it will run again fine. Yeah? But don't consider, don't continue with this. Your calculation will take 10 times as long as it should be. 14 seconds or two minutes. Okay? Just because the computer was heavily overloaded. <coughs> For big cases, Big again means, let's say, 50 atoms per unit cell. We have this iterative diagonalization. You activate it simply by setting an additional switch, minus IT, and eventually minus no high inf. That in is important if you have slow disks. If you have fast disks, then uh, remove this and just use minus it. What does it do? If you now look on such a parallel calculation, you see the LEPW0 was running on 64 cores and then taking therefore only 40 seconds, so much less than what it usually would take. And LEPW1 uh, took 29 minutes over here. But 
in the third cycle, these 29 minutes were going down to 14 minutes. Okay? That means in the first iteration, we cannot use this iterative diagonalization because we need eigenvectors as an input. And in the first iteration, usually we don't have an eigenvector. So we need in the first SCF cycle, cycle one, we do a standard LEPW calculation that took in this example half an hour, but in the third cycle, it was now using the eigenvectors of those uh, cycles for the new solution of the, of the eigenvalue problem and being a factor of two faster than otherwise. If you go to really big machines on a computing center, so you cannot run the way we are running here or you run on your local computer, but you have to use a batch system. That means you can only submit a job a script which you write to a queuing system and this job will run at some time whatever the system uh, lets you run that. Such queuing systems are called PBE or SGA or uh, there are many others of them so it's not a unique thing. You have to find out what queuing system you actually have and you submit a script to this queuing system. This script you have to write yourself in the script, you usually specify how many cores do I want to use. The specific syntax is depending on the queuing system. So this is just one example, something like this. Uh, here you would say, I want to use 32 cores. And the problem is now, you cannot write a machines file for this parallelization uh, statically because you don't know which nodes the queuing system will give you. That will be dynamically allocated. So you need in the script a way to produce these machines files on the fly. We have a couple of examples on our Win2K frequently asked question page for several queuing systems, at least the ones I know, which can be used as template to write this on your own. But with these lines, we write the machines file over here on the fly while the job is running and prepare this properly. Yeah? This is the way how it goes. Okay, at the end I would like to state almost please use the latest version of Win2K, typically every year. This is an exception, we still are in version 14, but version 16 should come soon, I hope at least, because uh, new versions gives you bug fixes, improved performance, new features and better and new utilities in general. Uh, for instance, in 14.2 we integrated Vintovania and this Berry PI program into it. New features of LEPW5 to do constant current STM mode or running L the spin orbit program in, in MPI or allowing DFD D3 or uh, different exchange functionals. In the next version we will have support for this libxc so you can use basically any exchange correlation potentially you want to use and things like this. And the last hint I would like to say is if you don't want to invest in this iFort compiler it's probably better to use the pre-built executables which we also distribute together with the source code then just a compilation with G Fortran and uh, a Fortran Plus or LAPAC routines because this will be much slower than even using these pre-built executables. The drawback is if you do this you cannot change anything of course. So if you find a bug or you find some feature which is missing, you want to add some output or something else, this cannot be done here, then you really need the executables. Good, thank you very much.